What is up guys? Today it's time for another tutorial. We will be taking a look at the reverbs and I'm going to showcase you guys how to use soft synth reverbs really well and effectively on your tracks and get the most out of them. For today's tutorial I'm going to use Wider, but you can use pretty much any soft synth reverb that has basic controls for like cutoffs, decays and those basic controls. Um, before we dive into the tutorial, take a listen to my latest remix of Love After Love on my YouTube channel. And also, I'm going to announce my upcoming Vital Priest pack in a week or two, probably. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in Vital Presets, Melodic Bass, Melodic Dubstep, all of that. I'm building a whole website for this thing, so we'll be announcing the website, priest pack, and also a full-fledged EP to come along with that. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Updates coming very shortly, but let's dive into the tutorial. Boom. Today we are going to talk about effects and specifically reverbs inside soft synths. Now, this is really important topic if you want to do your own sound design or if you want to maintain your mixes and keep them really clear sounding while using presets or another sample instruments. These tips are mainly focused around soft synths like Serum or Vidal. There's also a few others, but we will be using envelopes for these. So it's really important that you have some sort of soft synth that has uh, modular capabilities so you are able to apply envelopes on the controls. Now, I have prepared this really simple blocky sound and this MIDI pattern. And what we actually could do to really showcase this um, effect is create some sort of uh, pattern with chord change. Like that. And now I'm going to turn on the reverb. Already, you can kind of hear, it doesn't sound too bad, but the chord change really turns the reverb tails into muddy mesh. So what you can do is to turn down the time, of course, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep the time somewhat high so you are able to hear what is going on. But also, like sometimes you want those longer reverbs. So I'm going to show you how to manage them. Now, let me pump up the mix even more. Since the first step has to do with, with what we want to throw into our reverbs. Really muddy stuff. What I'm going to start with is to use this pre-low cut. And what it does, it limits the amount of frequencies that will go into the reverb plugin. So let me showcase it. Most of the times we do not want to have reverbs on our sub region. So let's just cut it around 100 Hertz. And maybe even a little bit higher. Now, I'm going to turn down the mix. And it's already a little bit clearer. Next, I'm going to use these low and high EQs, which control the output signal of the reverb. So... I usually like to have the low cut quite high, around 3 to 500 Hz, but let's play with it. F 
for this synth, I kind of like it around 250. Now, also same thing with the high end. If you really think about reverbs in like nature or in, in real world, you do not have that many high frequencies in your reverbs. So for more of a natural sounding reverbs, you want to use high cut on your reverbs and have it somewhere between 3 to 7000 hertz and that's like a safe area but of course for the effect purposes you could have like no high cut just boost the highs of your reverbs but for more natural sounding supporting um, atmospheric reverbs we want to tame our high frequency content on reverbs Now, this is starting to be much more controlled than what we started with, which I can actually, like, we can do A and B. But we started with this. And now we have this. Now, what if, what if you'd like to have a little bit longer reverbs like really make them transy like have something like eight seconds or seven seconds in that case it's really important to maintain the clarity of each individual note as an example in this progression you do not want to have the reverbs of these d sharp notes blurring these uh, later notes of the chord progression so what we could do is to use this envelope which controls our plug and have it modulate the mix of the reverb plugin. Now what this does is each time the plug hits, this envelope will turn down the reverb and then release it as it follows this EQ curve. So at the top we do not have any reverb and at the bottom we have the full amount decided by this mix control and let me showcase it to you that way you can have really long reverbs but all of the individual hits will be really clear and sharp. Now, it's really important to think about your sounds. Like if we have... This is a little bit spread out, but like usually with the basses or plugs and leads, they might be somewhat mono or like a little bit limited on the stereo spectrum. And you can kind of hear that our reverb right now is also very limited to the to center of stereo image. So it's also smart to think about how do you want to portray your reverbs. If we want really natural sounding room reverbs, it's important to keep your room sizes small and also we would keep the time quite small. You might need uh, headphones to hear this, but this is... But in the other hand, if you want to create really huge reverbs and have the notes seem um, separated from the reverb, or really emphasis the size of the room, you want to have your room sizes really big and keep your instruments somewhat more consistent in the middle. There's also one more trick 
that we could use. It's a little bit similar to the mix trick, but you can also do similar effect with the delay. Now delay is quite interesting. It doesn't mean a delay in a sense of a delay plugin, but it's a start delay from the initial carrier sound to the effect. So let me showcase. That way, each time you press note, there is a small delay and then the reverb will start. This also helps out your transients to pop out more in the mix, since you do not have the um, reverbs blending to the uh, um, carrier sound so much. And with this thing, if you do not want to do like stylistic reverb delays, you want to have quite small times like here we have 0.08 seconds or 0.018 seconds. That solely depends on what you want to do with your reverbs. Now, a couple other cool tips you can use. Um, this is quite cool effect, but you could turn down your reverb and have it follow the envelope of the sound. And if we listen to the dry and wet signal, you can hear how it adds this sort of little layer on top of your uh, plug sound. And that's quite cool trick to use sometimes. It can really emphasize like the size of your blocks. That's pretty much all I have to, for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's a lot of stylistical things you can do with your reverbs. If you do not just want a natural room sounds, but even like trying to mimic certain space, like in your tracks, it's really important to maintain some sort of uh, current room the size or feeling of space so that you are not all around with the different room sizes and different reverbs that really helps to solidify your solidify your mixes and keep them more uh, uh, coherent as we might say but thanks for watching this tutorial let me know if you'd like me to go over any other effects in in plugins and show you cool tricks on how to use use those plugins i'm kind of in the middle of working on a lot of cool stuff new music is coming i'm i have a couple announcements that are coming or it might be already out when this tutorial is out but stay tuned for new releases i'm going to be much more active on youtube i'm going to tell you guys more about that very soon but i'll go see you guys in the next tutorial